What's up guys? My name is Michael and today I'm going to introduce you to Capture One 12 in under 12 minutes. So time is short, let's do it. We are here in Capture One and as you can see the interface has been made much nicer. So we have clean icons and we have a little bit bigger fonts which is a great thing. I love the way Capture One 12 now looks. But let's talk about some general things in Capture One. Now the user interface is fine but what you need to know is that you can rearrange all of the tools that are in here. Let me show you how it's done. Let's say I want to move the exposure tool up. I want to take the white balance tool over here onto my image so that I can work on it. Now let's say I want to work on a curve and there is no curve tool. What you want to do then is right click in here, select add tool and then choose the tool that you want to add. So what I really like about the curve tool is that when I increase its size, it's really much more easy to work with this tool. I don't like a small curve tool. Now let's close or remove this tool back in here and the white balance over here. If you come from Lightroom, you want to make sure to select workspace and choose migration. Now migration will change the way Capture One looks and will help you get things done way quicker because it's made for people switching from other applications. Also make sure you have a look at the keyboard shortcut manager because in here you get access to all the tools that Capture One provides. So for example, I have made a shortcut in which I can show and hide the viewer with the V button. Let me show you what it does. If I press the V on my keyboard, the viewer will show and hide. Now that's something that you know from Lightroom, which is the grid view. By the way, when comparing Capture One and Lightroom, Fuji RAW files look way better. I guess you have already seen that. Now in order to work with images, you will need to import images. On the upper left, there's the icon for importing images. Make sure you select exclude duplicates, select where you want to import from, select where you want to copy the images to, and then select import. Now let's talk about a tool we use every day. That's the crop tool. You just press C on your keyboard or select the crop tool manually. Every tool up here has this little arrow. If you click that arrow, you get more options. For example, square. Now just click and drag and your image is cut in square. Now let's say we want to rotate an image or straighten an image. Select the rotate tool with the R button on your keyboard or click on this symbol. Now you can draw a line which needs to be in level and you're done. Or you can also click on the little arrow and select rotate freehand to be a little more free. Now let's talk about the color editor. If you don't see the color editor, make sure you make a right click, select add tool and color editor. Now with the color editor, you get an amazing tool for working with colors. Let me show you how it's done. In this image, I have already changed the blue tones. Now let's go ahead and add something else. For this reason, I select the color picker and then click into the image and select the color I want to work on. Now in this case, I want to work on this yellow part. I would always recommend once you select the color, you, see you click on this icon right here, which will select the full saturation range of this color. After that, you can adjust the hue, saturation and the lightness of the selected color. Now let's say we want to work on a mask. Now we can create a layer and have this color as the default mask. For this reason, you just click on the three dots and select create mask layer from selection. So if I now go into the layers, I see that I have a new layer. Now I go into the exposure tab and this little symbol here shows you that you're currently working on a layer. So I can now 
change the exposure, contrast, and actually whatever I like, and it will only work on the selected color range. Isn't that cool? Another really important tool is the loop tool. So you just press the P button on your keyboard or select the loop tool here, and you can now magnify an area of your image. And you can also use the loop tool on your thumbnails as well. Let's talk about presets. Actually, Capture One doesn't call them presets, Capture One calls them styles. Now, I have made some of my own styles and I'm gonna apply a style to this image. This image is currently unedited, so I'm gonna apply the Death Valley style. And now, all I have to do is go into the exposure tab, decrease the exposure a little bit, increase the saturation, and I have a beautiful image. Now let's say you're done editing. So you wanna see a before and after, that's easy. You alt click on this arrow, hold it, you see the before, let go, you see the after. Now, if you don't press the alt button, your image will be reset. Let's do it, let's go back, you see, this is your editing history, backwards and forward. By the way, you can also apply styles to a layer. Let me show you how it's done. I'm gonna right click here, apply to new layer, and then I can use the mask tool, which is on your keyboard, uh, the letter G for gradient, for example. Draw a line and tell Capture One to only apply the preset on the upper half of the image. Let me show you what it looks like without the preset in the sky and with the preset in the sky. A new feature in Capture One 12 is the Radial Gradient tool. To use this tool, click here and select the Radial Gradient Mask or just press T on your keyboard. So I'm now gonna draw a mask, fine tune the mask, decrease saturation, add contrast and now I can see that I want it exactly the opposite. So what I'm going to do is right click on this layer and select invert mask. And of course there are also several other ways to create masks. Of course you can create a mask with a brush tool. And new in Capture One 12 is Luma range. Now let's create a Luma mask for this image. I have created a layer. I will now click on Luma range and I will now select only the bright part of this image. Display mask. Whenever you wanna see what your mask looks like, you press M. Now, if you're a Fuji photographer, you certainly love film simulations. Capture 112 now gives you the ability to work with your film simulations in a RAW converter. Now, let me show you where you find that. You go into base characteristics, select the curve, and you will find your Fujifilm Acros, your Astia, Classic Chrome, Eterna, Pronec High, Provia, Velvia, whatever you like. If you want to copy and paste your editing from one image to another, you just click on the arrow facing up, go to the image you want to paste your settings to, and click on the arrow facing down. If you want to get more control over the functions that are copied and pasted, you select the Adjustments tab and you can select or deselect whatever you like in order to get what you need. Capture One Pro is also an excellent tool for tethered shooting. All you have to do is connect your camera with a USB cable, take a picture and it doesn't take long until you see the picture on your screen. Of course, you can also release the camera directly in Capture One. You have this camera symbol up here and you can also change and rearrange your toolbar by right clicking and selecting customize toolbar and choose whatever you need. For example, I can now see the camera battery status in my toolbar. While talking about tethered shooting, make sure you check out the Capture Pilot software app on your smartphone or tablet because you can browse through your images, select images, check for focus, give them a rating, see the histogram. You can also use it as a release 
for your camera. All right, it's time to get our images out of Capture One. Let's go into the output panel. There is this gear icon and I'm now going to create a recipe for you guys. So I'm going to hit the plus. Let's call it JPEG 1500 pixel 80%. Tell Capture One to create a JPEG quality. As I just said, 80 scale. We're going to select long edge 1500 pixels. Let's say we want to save it to the desktop. Don't change the name. We're ready to go. And all I have to do is click this gear icon to create a JPEG version of this image. It's as easy as that. The fun thing is that you can select multiple recipes at once and Capture One will create all the files that you want to have without doing separate exports. If you want to export multiple images, select them and make sure you click this icon. If you don't do that, then only the highlighted image will be exported. With all the things that I just showed you, you will get a good start in Capture One. But trust me, the software is way more complex than you might think. Make sure you also check the full length introduction video to Capture One on my channel. If you want to get a Capture One license, make sure you use my code AMBPC which will offer you up to 10% discount on your license. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I wish you all the best. Have a good day. Thanks for watching.